Hi everyone, Calliope here. You have been such amazing readers all summer long that I thought you deserve a special treat. I have with me my reading buddy here. He is an author and he has his own search dog. Everyone say hi to Bob Calkins and his search dog, Ruger. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having us. We really enjoy being here. And thanks to the MWR folks for inviting us. We're going to have, I think, some fun today. Would you stay with us, Clyde? Because Absolutely. I'm going to need your help with some stuff. Okay. So let me introduce Ruger here real, real quickly. Ruger is a nine-year-old golden retriever. If I can get him to turn around and face the camera. There we go. That'll be good enough. He's a nine-year-old golden retriever and we have trained him to find people who are missing, both live people and people who passed away. His job is to go out in the woods with me, lead me around. He is actually my boss. He tells me what to do. He <laughs> finds the missing person, and then he comes back and gets me and leads me to them. He's a very high energy dog who loves to work, and you're gonna get to see him work here in just a little bit. But because he sometimes tries to upstage me when we do these presentations, and I want to talk to you for a little bit, I'm going to put him in his crate. This is not doggy jail. This is his place of refuge, and he very much likes being in there. That's kind of his quiet spot. So he'll be in there so we can actually talk a little bit. Well, search and rescue dogs, how do they do what they do? This particular kind of dog has a special way that he works. Sometimes you hear of dogs that get a scent article from the person and the dogs follow the person anywhere they go. That's really hard because it's hard to get a scent article that's actually got the right person's scent on it. It's much harder than you would ever expect. So Ruger doesn't do that. Ruger finds any human out in the woods and he does it because every human is a little campfire. Did you know that you're a little campfire? I mean, I have red in my hair. You are just like a little campfire. You've all been to a campfire. You've all seen smoke come off of a campfire and it blows through the woods. Oh, just like when you're making s'mores? Oh, s'mores. The smell of s'mores. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so what Ruger's job is, is to get downwind of the person he's looking for and pick up their smell blowing on the breeze just like they were a little campfire. So the way we look at this kind of scientifically is that you are your own little campfire. Your scent is coming up, your scent is coming up off your body and blowing through the woods. And about the only contribution I make as a human is to figure out where to go in the woods to be most likely of picking up your scent. Then he comes to you, turns around, comes back and gets me and away we go. Now we have some cool stuff that we use to do it, some neat gadgetry. Would you like to see some of that? Absolutely. I'm gonna have you hold this so that I can take it out. First of all, of course, everybody knows what this is. It's a two-way radio, right? We have something called a GPS that helps us figure out where Ruger has been and where he has searched. And I'm going to tell you the little secret of search and rescue because you're in the club now. We get lost all the time. No. Yes. Well, I'm when we're out searching, I'm watching Ruger. I'm watching Ruger for a little twitch of his tail or a snap of his head that means he's smelled your little campfire. And so as we're out there, sometimes I lose track of where we're at. So the GPS helps me do that. Now, I have another little special thing. Okay. What do you think that is for? Um, well, it's not perfume. Oh, I know. That's um, the what you use to clean out Ruger's nose. Everybody says that, and that's a great guess, and it's wrong. This tells me which way the wind is blowing. Because oh. remember, I'm trying to get Ruger in the smoke from your little personal campfire. That makes sense. So this sense. tells me which way the wind is blowing, so I kind of know where to take Ruger to get him in your scent. Now, this is the most important thing. Okay. The absolute most important thing we do. What do you think this is? Um, a dog toy? Yes, it's a dog toy. It's a dog toy that he has chewed the squeaky out of, in fact. I was gonna make it squeak <laughs> for you. This is Ruger's paycheck. 
every dog, every search dog has a special toy. It might be a ball or a tug. This is a little rubber stick thing. It's made to like a branch of a tree mm -hmm. and Ruger just goes crazy for it. So we save this toy. Ruger has lots of other toys, but we save this toy as his most special toy. So when he finds someone either in training or in real life, he gets to play with this toy and you're gonna to get to see him do that. It's green like money too. It's green, I have them in all kinds of colors. <laughs> and I even have some that still squeak that he hasn't chewed the squeak yet. Well. <laughs> well, would you like to see Ruger do a little search? Yes. All right, let's go ahead and we'll go on over. Would you guys like to see Ruger do a little search? All, all right, right, let's do it. Okay, so let's uh, come over here, Calliope, and we're gonna to get to show you how Ruger does a little search. Okay. Did I tell you there are only two things that we have to teach the dog to be a search dog? No. There's a million things for the human. The human is way harder to train than the dog. There's only two things we have to teach the dog to search. We have to teach the dog what smell we want them to sniff out, what odor we want them to find, and we have to teach the dog how to tell us they found that odor. That's it. Once the dog knows those things, they're a search dog, then the human has like a million other things like the radio and the GPS to figure out how to be able to support the dog. Okay. So what we have here is a little exercise that lets Ruger sharpen up which odor and how to tell us. And it's a really fun exercise and you're going to get to see something really cool happen. So are you ready for this? I'm so ready. Are you guys ready? Okay. So Ruger's going to go check these boxes. In one of the boxes is a pair of just bloody socks. A friend of mine ran a marathon. She got a blister. It bled into her socks. That's all the dog needs to be able to find a missing person is just that little bit of blood on the sock. So Ruger's gonna go find that. You're gonna see him do what he does. And then you'll see something really cool happen. Okay, find Digger, up you go. What a good boy! What a good dog! Oh, and then what we have to do, he runs off with his toy. We have to be just absolutely silly when we reward the dog. If you don't feel stupid when you're rewarding a dog, you're not doing it right. Oh, come here, buddy. Yay, we'll tug. You want to tug? You gonna give me your toy? He's probably gonna try and keep his toy away from me. We can tug. And when we train a new dog, we do this. We'll search for 10 seconds and we'll play for five minutes because we want the dog to have the best time in the whole world. Now, why am I talking in a silly voice like this? When you, what does a dog sound like when they're unhappy? Or they growl. What does a dog sound like when they're happy? They're all yippy and barky and stuff like that. So even as men with deep voices, we have to learn to talk in a high voice to our dog. So we make the dog think we had just a wonderful time. That's so cool. And then he's gonna go off and get in his kennel and lay there with his toy because he's earned that. That's his paycheck. So that, in a nutshell, is the very basics of how search and rescue dogs work. We make it bigger and bigger to where we're searching a few acres and then lots of acres and some days hundreds of acres, but we start with very small searches like that. What well, do you think? I have a question. Sure. How many searches has Ruger been on? Ooh. I think the last time I looked, it was about it was almost a hundred. Whoa, a hundred. That's a really big number. Yeah. He's been on lots of searches and he's found a few people. That's so great. You know, it's really hard when we're out in the woods. There's a lot of woods and only one person to search for and lots of dogs. So uh, unlike a police dog, he doesn't find somebody on every search. You know, a police dog, there's kind of always a crook. But search dogs don't find somebody on every search, but they get their share of them, and we like bringing people back to their families. Mm -hmm. So, would you like now to hear a book? I would love it. Okay, so guys, our reading friend, our author friend here, he has written a book all about a search dog. Her name is Sierra. Are you guys ready to read with us one more time? All right, we'll I do think it. they're ready. Let's oh, go let's do it. Go. All right, Ruger buddy, good job. Let's get you put away in your kennel here real quickly, and then we're gonna sit down and read a book. All right, there you go, Ruger. We'll zip you in here. You can play with your toy. And we're gonna read the book that we promised you. 
So I need to tell you, Sierra was my first search dog. Ruger's actually my third. Sierra was the search dog that let me make all my human mistakes. Because remember we said the human is actually the harder half of the team to train. So she was a very tolerant, patient dog. She was a good search dog, but she was a good search dog for me to learn on. So when it came time to write a book, I just had to make Sierra the character of the books. She was just my special pup, and uh, we've kept her memory alive by making her the hero of the books. So this book is called Sierra Becomes a Search Dog, and it's a pretend story of how a little dog named Sierra becomes a search dog. So let's get started. Once there was a little golden retriever puppy named Sierra, and that kind of looks like her. Sierra was very curious. She sniffed everything. She sniffed the shoe. She sniffed the socks. She sniffed the flowers. She sniffed the box. Sierra even helped Bryce play hide and seek. She used her nose to sniff out where everyone had hidden. When she found someone, she gave them lots of puppy kisses. Sierra loved playing hide and seek. So one day, Bryce's father had an idea. Maybe Sierra could be a search and rescue dog, he thought. Sierra was, Sierra was so good at hide and seek, she could certainly find people who were lost in the woods. And there's Bryce's father, and there's the little light bulb going on over his head, the bright idea that he's having about Sierra. Well, Bryce and Sierra spent a lot of time practicing, and Sierra became a very good search dog. Whenever Sierra would find people, she would be rewarded with her favorite ball. Sierra liked ser searching so much that she would sniff someone's hat or coat, and then she would go find them, even when they didn't really want to be found. Who would want to be found by a dog when you're in the shower? But Sierra would do that. One day the neighbors came over looking for their little girl Betty. She'd been gone a long time. We think she's in the woods. She wasn't supposed to go there by herself. She may be lost. They knew how good Sierra was at playing hide and seek, so they asked if Sierra might be able to help find their daughter. Do you think Sierra can help us? They asked. Bryce let Sierra sniff Betty's sweater to learn her scent. They went quickly to the woods, and just like in practice, Sierra started sniffing the ground. Sierra sniffed by the big tree. She sniffed by the small bush. And she went down the trail with everyone right behind. They went a long way down the trail. Sierra had to search for a long time, but she stuck with it and never gave up. Finally, behind a tree, there was Betty. I went out on the trail and must have gone the wrong way, Betty said. Her parents were very happy that Betty was okay, and she got lots of puppy kisses, and Sierra got her ball. Bryce told Sierra, we practiced and practiced, but now you've done it for real. Sierra, you're officially a search and rescue dog. And here's Sierra getting her official search and rescue vest because now she's saved a little girl. Thank you very much for having us over for this. Thank you. And thank you guys all for reading with us this summer. Everyone, I really hope you enjoyed hearing our story here uh, with Bob Calkins and his story about his search dog, Sierra. I have had a wonderful summer with you all. And look, you truly have colored my world. So thank you so much for joining us. I really hope you had a fun summer. I did, and um, I have a question. Yes? Can I play with Ruger? Oh, absolutely. Thank you, and bye, everybody. We're going to play with Ruger some more. Come on out, buddy. Yay! <laughs>